So in this mini lecture, we will continue with the lateral directional stability derivative, which is CLP. And the physical meaning of CLP is the rolling moment change due to the rolling angular rate. Before we do the derivation of uh, CLP, and let's first define this problem. And we can describe the problem this way. So we have an aircraft is flying uh, into the screen. So what happens now is it starts a rolling maneuver with the right wing down and simultaneously the uh, left wing should go up. And this rolling motion has an angular rate of P radian per second. So they are, they are all indicated through the uh, green arrows. Okay, so then what happens is this motion will be resisted by the lift generated on the wing and leading to a restoring moment L. So the L is restoring moment L is indicated through the uh, red vector. Okay, so now we have the question how to derive the induced rolling moment. So this is a key issue and uh, in the derivation of CLP. Now let's start the derivation. We've already uh, understand the problem. Now we are replacing the, um, the nice uh, view of the aircraft through this simplified view. We are generally show this aircraft as a, a tube and a plane system. So the tube stands for the uh, fuselage and the, the plane stands for the wing. Okay, so now According to this rear view, the aircraft is subject to a rolling moment P, which is a positive P. And then we also provide a top view, so we can see the fuselage, the center line, and also the wing. And remember, this is a general wing. It not necessarily mean it's a rectangular wing. So it's showing as a rectangular wing, but doesn't mean it's actually the in a rectangular shape. Okay, so it's general. And in order to do the derivation, we need to consider incremental wing section. So it's highlighted in there. And uh, the width is uh, dy, the span is dy, and it's located at y. And we also know the chord is a function of y also. So the first thing is we need to know the force acting on the, on the incremental wing section or the induced lift. In order to analyze uh, the induced lift, we need to have a side view that helps us to, uh, to analyze the force acting on that incremental section. Okay, now we have the right view, which is from the right side of the wing. Okay, so we are just viewing that incremental section of the wingspan. So we know the aircraft flying at speed V and because of the rolling motion, and there's induced velocity uh, going downward, so the magnitude of that velocity is Py. And combining these two, uh, one horizontal, one uh, vertical velocity, we have the actual velocity. Total velocity is pointing, actually pointing towards the uh, downward. And then we have induced angle of attack. So in this case, there will be an induced lift. Okay, so now in order to get the lift, we, we should know what is our, the magnitude of angle of attack. Okay, so in that triangle, we know tangent alpha is equals Py divided by V. And remember, we've used the small angle small disturbance assumption, which means we can assume this alpha is a small value, small angle. And in that case, alpha equals Py divided by V. And in here, remember, always remember, alpha has, and the unit for alpha is radian instead of degree. Remember this, and it's very useful, and we will use it many times later on. Okay, we know the angle of attack, induced angle of attack. Then naturally, if we uh, we we know the lift coefficient slope, we can get the lift or lift coefficient, right? So the induced lift on the incremental section can be um, written as d lift 
that's incremental lift equals a that's the slope of the lift coefficient curve and then we have the angle of times at the angle of attack because a times py divided by v or a times alpha is just a lift coefficient so in order to get the lift we need to times uh, um, half rho v squared times s so cy times dy is actually the area of that incremental section is that right so now we have the induced lift so it's basically uh, deduced from that right view and it's very important now i'm pasting the incremental lift induced incremental lift on that small section and since we are looking at the rolling moment so we know the force and times the moment arm then we have the moment that's straight forward okay so the induced moment on the incremental section can be written as dl so i just write for lift i didn't use l but use the full name lift that's to distinguish l the moment and the force okay so dl means uh, induced moment and so it's just y times d lift and remember maybe you already noticed you you will see you see a negative sign why this sign is negative you have a negative sign that's because it's a restoring moment and if you use your right hand side since looking at the incremental section on the right wing and since the lift is pointing out of the plane and then so this moment dl pointing towards the tail of the aircraft that's why it's negative okay this is because the induced moment points to the negative x-axis okay so we we know the incremental induced moment if we do the integration then we know the moment right so that's the conclusion so far from here the incremental wings uh, the induced moment on the incremental wingspan so that's the uh, uh, for dl incremental moment and then we just do the integration from uh, the left wing tip to the right side wing tip and so we have the integration from minus half b to positive half b b is a wingspan okay so which which the task for now is just to simplify l and what we can do is to uh, move the constant part out of the integration this is what we get okay so now we need to focus on the right hand side but you know because cy is general we can't do uh, more things so what we can do is we can notice the integration is kind of symmetrical so we can just do half of it okay so then we just uh, do the integration from zero to half b because you have y square so you just times two and then the uh, half um, one over two is uh, eliminated okay so you have now we have l we can write down the l and the next step is to get the lp so which is uh, partial l partial p and we just divide p from l so that's the lp but it's in the dimensional form what how can we get its non-dimensional form which is clp and if we use the table again and find the denominator which is half rho v s b square and eventually we have this uh, do some elimination we will have uh, the final answer on the right hand side so this is the clp derivation for general wing okay so let's see some special case the first case is uh, if the wing is a rectangular wing in the derivation above as i said the c because the wing is a general wing and cy is is a function of y so we don't know what happens to that but now in this case we know it's a rectangular wing which means c is a constant 
So in this case, we can take C out. So that's what it suggests. And we can just take C out and then do the integration. That's not hard, right? It's uh, just a calculus. And so we're doing the integration on the right-hand side. Eventually, it becomes um, B cubed divided by 24. Then we just plug it in. So we have CLP equals minus ABC divided by 12S. And if we look at the picture on the top right, we know B is a span, C is a chord. So B times C is actually the wing area. So we can, the S can be eliminated. And eventually, the answer is CLP equals minus A divided by 12. So this is answer. And for rectangular wing, we know CLP is just minus A over 12. So A, A is uh, the slope of the lift coefficient curve for the wing. So that's the answer for case one. Now we, let's do some analysis or discussion. So this result is usually an overestimate. Why is that? Because the fuselage is not taken into account. The location where the fuselage is, we thought we considered as part of the wing. So that's why it's an overestimation. In reality, it should be slightly smaller. The actual value of COP is commonly around minus 0.2 and it's ir irrespective of aircraft size. So what I can provide you is a few parameters for different uh, four types of aircrafts. And we can see Boeing 747 has very big wingspan, which is close to 60 meters. But for Cherokee, the last one, it's only about 10 meters wingspan. And also we can see the net, uh, dimensional LP. So there's a huge, very huge difference. But if it's non-dimensional CLP, they are very close, as I said in here uh, before, and it's around minus 0.2. And you can see all these three air, four aircrafts all have minus negative CLP. That's because um, that's a restoring moment. Okay, now let's go to case two, which is slightly harder. If the wing is tapered wing, so what is tapered wing, which, which means the root of the root cord, and for example, is C, we notify it as CR, and then the tip wing cord is CT, so they are not equal to each other, and the wing generally show, shows up like a trapezoid. Okay. And since we know CL and a CR, and then we can determine and uh, define a taper ratio, which is lambda. Lambda equals CT over CR. So lambda is a number less than one. And also, if we look at, move your eye to the to the figure on the right hand side, and we can see, and um, there is a cord C inside the wing, and it's located at Y. And also, since we are only showing show half of the wing so that's a semi span s and again there's we have the assumption of no fuse large okay and uh, now let's make another definition which is uh, for mean cord c bar and it's just uh, the uh, the average value of ct and the cr okay again the task similar as uh, as a, a rectangular wing, where we should work on the integration part of CLP, which is showing on top of this page. Okay. In order to do that, to do the integration, because we have CY and Y square, we need to find the relation between C and Y. So we need to link these two items. And essentially, it means we need to um, write down C equals the function of uh, CY, okay? And what we can do is get this relation. So half B minus Y divided by half B equals C minus CT divided by CR minus CT. And Y is the location of that uh, chord C and C is, the chord uh, C is the chord at that location Y. So it's actually 
and this relation is based on the similarity of a triangle in that trapezoid wing okay and then we just make c explicit so we can have a relation now we can find the function c of y so how c can be expressed by y okay then we plug c into c y square and we can have that relation it's a bit complicated but don't worry and i really encourage you to do this okay and then we plug the in and do the integration so we can have this the small s remember it is the semi span and the c bar is the mean chord so we have this relation We've, we finish integration and now the task is to plug it back to the top relation CLP okay. so we can do and uh, you can do the intermediate steps I'm just giving you the answer I, I would say it's quite rather straightforward um, process so you can find CLP it's not as straightforward as uh, as a rectangular wing but we can see if lemma equals one is that actually a rectangular wing okay so we can uh, inversely validate whether we had the right answer in case one okay so it, again we can find clps minus a over 12. so in this way we indirectly demonstrate we were correct in the derivation of case one the rectangular wing so this is what we are for the uh, CLP derivation in some of the discussion and remember CLP is always negative and the way we um, do the derivation which is uh, the so-called incremental method we are, what we are looking at is uh, incremental section on the wing so that's the two important points of this um, parameter